Hello and welcome to the program where I put the world in context. This week we have a look at the following stories. Fighting Words, the UN's disunited conference on racism. Helsinki Plus, Russia's vision for a new security order. The Dismal Science, Russia's multi-pronged anti-crisis strategy. The United Nations Conference on Racism never really had a chance. Before it opened its doors, a number of Western countries vocally boycotted it. Then, the keynote speaker and the only head of state to attend took the floor, the Iranian president. His reputation precedes him, and he didn't disappoint. He claimed Israel, without naming it, was a cruel and racist repressive regime. Western delegates walked out in protest, and the other 170 delegates remained seated. The organizers of the event made it emphatically clear that the alleged shortcomings of the same conference in Durban, South Africa in 2001 had been addressed. Under American and Israeli pressure at the Geneva conference, there would be no mention of Israel and the hotly debated issue of Zionism. Additionally, there would be no side events dealing with the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. But that was not enough to appease the Americans or the Israelis and many other Western countries. We would have liked to have been there. There was, uh, and we, we pushed hard. We, our um, views and criteria were well known. They were announced on February 27th. Uh, some progress was made, and we welcomed that progress. Uh, on the other hand, there were other aspects of the uh, draft resolution uh, coming out of that conference that we still have problems with related to the reaffirmation of the entire uh, Durban One program of action uh, and references to, to incitement of religion uh, of religious hatred, which uh, it, the way it was drafted was tantamount to prohibitions on freedom of speech. Israel's boycott of the event was based on its uses of the past to justify its policies and politics in the present. To have Ahmadinejad as a guest of a, a world conference against racism uh, 65 years after what happened in Europe in the previous century is just a Another expression of a world that uh, turned crazy. It is wrong and immoral to deny the Holocaust against the Jews of Europe during the Second World War. But it is just as wrong to deny the peoples of the Arab and Muslim world the right to feel that they are two victims of a Holocaust committed against them by Western imperialism and Israel. The most recent example is the war against the people of Gaza. We live in a very unfortunate age. Cultures and countries prove their virtue and defend their worldview and politics based on past suffering. Americans threw off British colonialism and claimed a new era of human freedom. Israel became a state in Palestine after the slaughter of the Jews in Europe. Neither country has lived up to its claim to virtues. It is interesting to note that many delegates at the conference walked out in protest when hearing the Iranian president's remarks. This is what was reported by Western mainstream media. But what was not reflected upon was the fact that the vast majority of the delegates stayed in their seats, many of them cheering the man from Tehran. Why was this? Was it because of their hatred for the United States and Israel? Well, there can be no doubt this was true for some delegates. But for the rest, it is fair to assume that all countries in the world must deal with racism and injustice even the rich and today very arrogant. Those who walked out from the meeting were in the minority and their number was insignificant. Do they want to impose themselves on the world's majority while being in the minority themselves? This immoral behavior, which is against democracy, recommend them to increase their tolerance and capacity. Ahmadinejad's spirited address did not go unanswered. The UN Secretary General led a chorus of voices berating the Iranian president's presentation and selective interpretation uh -huh. of racism in the world today. This is the opposite of what this conference seeks to achieve. This makes it significantly more difficult to build constructive solutions to the very real problem of racism. It is deeply regrettable that my plea to look to the future of unity was not heeded by the Iranian president. 
Monotheism. For some in the world, Ahmadinejad's words are regrettable and worse. However, he highlighted what others feel just as strongly about the nature of racism and intolerance. Boycotting racism won't make it go away, and it's certainly not the most honorable way to avoid one's own past and present mistakes. As long as the rich and powerful avoid being made to face their own racism and intolerance, we will be forced to reckon with injustice and pay a high price for the arrogance of a few. On a state visit to Finland, Russian President Dmitry Medvedev challenged outdated assumptions about global security and proposed some new ones of his own. What secured the peace during the Cold War no longer applies today. Medvedev made a strong case for this, but so far, few are willing to listen. In so many words, Medvedev asked the following. Since the Cold War is long over, why is the Cold War security architecture still in place? Importantly, he proposed where we should go from here. Russia welcomes all countries and organizations working in Europe to agree on transparent, contemporary, and most importantly, efficient rules. We need a new platform. Neither NATO, nor the European Union, nor the Commonwealth of Independent States could be the one. The dialogue on the new agreement should start at the highest level. At the summit in Helsinki, Medvedev's proposal received only lip service in return. In principle, Medvedev's new approach was accepted, but little more. What I do like about the initiative, it's, it's a new opening. But one thing we must remember, that we have very good security institutions in the European Union, in NATO, in the OSCE. So if we start talking about something which Medvedev referred to as Helsinki Plus, something which gets everything aboard between Vancouver and Vladivostok. I have absolutely no problem having a look at it, and it did sound interesting indeed. The fact of the matter is, none of these institutions are up to today's security challenges. The reasons are simple. The origins of the Helsinki arrangement go back to a grand bargain the Soviet Union made with the West. In exchange for officially recognizing the political outcome of the Second World War, the West got what would become the OSCE. Now it's time to move on. I don't think we're doing a new Helsinki because what was established in 1975 was very good. It had human rights, it had security, it had economy, it's been added on with some environment. So what we want is sort of Helsinki and Paris plus. I know this sounds like foreign policy jargon, but basically the idea is to get everyone to talk about security together and think about security in broad terms, not in narrow terms. Indeed, this is a lot of jargon, and senseless jargon at that. It is also a dangerous denial of reality. The 1975 Helsinki Accords aimed to achieve the following. The respect of borders, refrain from using force among members, pursuit of dialogue and cooperation, as well as conventional arms control agreements. All of these principles have either been violated or are in serious disrepair. There is no better example of how the Helsinki Agreements are obsolete today than Kosovo's unilateral declaration of independence. Then there is Georgia's aggression against South Ossetia. Every Helsinki principle failed and fellow OSCE members found themselves in armed conflict. This demands a serious rethink of the security of the pan-European landmass, and Russia has already started to do its part. We made a decision to cut the number of military personnel in Russia's westernmost region of Kaliningrad. Actually, we have cut troop numbers several times. We have now removed a significant amount of heavy weaponry. This is a good example of transparent and pragmatic attitude to security. We hope our NATO partners would apply an equally restrained and reasonable approach. And we would welcome a decision by NATO to cancel its plans to build up its presence in the Baltic states. And Medvedev warned of a serious red line that should not be crossed. No country should pursue absolute security at the expense of other countries and the entire international system. A truly global anti-missile defense cannot serve the interests of only one country or even a group of countries. Its structure cannot be defined unilaterally, something we saw when the well-known decision to place an AMD system in Europe was taken. We believe the discussion on AMD configuration in Europe should involve all Europeans, not just a club of selected who have taken certain responsibilities upon themselves. 
What the world needs is a new Helsinki Accord. It needs Helsinki Plus that is a reflection of the times. We continue to live within security structures that divide and alienate countries, as well as needlessly create new borders two decades after the fall of the Berlin Wall. After a short break, some thoughts on NATO's tragic courtship with Georgia. So stay with us.